Hey there, friends. It is me, HL Mod Tech, and it is Winter Coat Edition of the Hey, I'm here on a Saturday playing with my toys. Uh, I got that Glowfort project I showed you a while ago where we made the cardboard castle. I did it again. This time, I used a little bit of math. I got one last piece to print. I am not sure how I lost it or counted wrong, but here is the last little circle of my castle. Then I'll show you what it looks like. Huge reminder when you're working with cardboard, make sure your numbers are right. You can see there's a little bit of combustion happening under there. You do not want to start a fire inside your glow forge. So there you go. Perfectly cut out. You could see a little bit of fire, but not enough to actually totally combust. This is the glow forge castle right before I finished putting it together. I accidentally uh, printed a layer and forgot to insert it. So I'll probably make one more just so it's perfect, perfect. But what's different about this one is I measured my cardboard ahead of time and I knew it was going to be five millimeters. And then as I designed it, I made sure that all the way up it was uh, exactly five millimeters between each change in the items. And on this side, you can actually read Mod Tech a little bit better. Still not easy to read, but those are some pretty funky letters to have show up in cardboard. Alrighty friends, so a little while back I showed you my Glowforge castle and it was just me playing, having fun designing, and it turned out pretty cool, but uh, anytime that you actually think through your design and plan the whole way for what you're ending up with, it ends up being a lot slicker. So let me take you into the project and show you what I did for my second version that made it turn out even a little better. So the first thing I did was I made my project a little bit smaller so that I could print it on fewer plates. Then I measured my cardboard and found that my cardboard was 5 millimeters thick. Knowing that allowed me to make it in special uh, layers so that when I went to assemble it, I had a system. Now this turned out pretty darn slick. Let me show you what I did. I'm going to ungroup this piece by piece simply using the little ungroup button that's built into Tinkercad. So here you can see the holes that attached all my Tinkercad parts together. And then the magic part is this. If I slide over and let's look at this side right here, I believe it is. If I turn that to invisible, you will see these amazing little pins that I inserted into the project. I staggered them five millimeters apart and that way when the project was finished, I had holes so I could tell which layer happened where. So right here there would be one hole, two holes, three holes, four holes, five holes, six holes. And when I got to this last one, it was all the holes. And then I knew I went back three, two, one to get back the other way. Actually it was one, two, three, uh, and I finally had four to get back to the final one. I had one empty layer that I ended up forgetting to add. That was an oops. And then when it all comes back together, it's cut out the way it's supposed to be with my cool words inserted and all the other parts. I added this so that there'd be a place for the people to stand in my little castle for if I were trying to make it realistic. And then these little bars connect the cutouts so that when we're finished, it's a one piece part. Uh, if you ever have the little segments all the way cut through well then you don't have one piece parts and you end up with all these tiny nuggets which are evil well so that's the same reason these rings are here as well and then I'm gonna click on this and use the top view and fit view to selection all I did here was trim out the middle so that it looked perfect once they were assembled and if I do the show all you can see how there would have been the red nub inside there one other trick I need to do before I reassemble it, because I just did the show all button, I'm going to grab all of these pieces right here, and I'm going to hide them. And that gives me access to this piece right here, which is the cutout piece. And I can do a sweet thing called lock. So now that piece cannot be changed, because otherwise my large hole in the center would have destroyed that. I also need to lock these four special pieces that I added, 
or they will get uh, cut by the uh, little pieces that cut across. And I just simply need to find a place where I can see them. There, I've got that one locked. I can peek at this one here, locked. And I'm gonna have to spin around to the other side, which I can do with one click using that little view cube. So now that those important parts are locked, I can do my show all to bring them back. I can grab everything, and when I hit group, it groups all the parts that need to be grouped, but it does not group the ones that I locked. There is my castle with all the parts in place. Now I can unlock those pieces, and I'll do one final grouping to put it all together. And with my castle assembled, I'll take one last spin around look at it, make sure everything is as I expect, and I can hit export as an STL so I can bring it in to the special Kiri slicer. I'm gonna call it Glowforge Castle 5 because I've been working at this for a while, and let me take you to the slicing app and show you how that works. With the design in place, let's slice it. I'm gonna use a tool called Kiri Moto and I'm gonna just type it in. I'll have a link uh, for you down below. It's at grid.space slash Kiri. When you open it, it's got my old one in it. I'm just gonna delete that piece. I'm gonna switch to laser cutting, and then like I told you, this time I was smart, and I measured the layer height of my cardboard. Last time I guessed, my cardboard was five millimeters thick, so my whole project was built on that five millimeter uh, design. I am gonna import the design. Remember we named it Glowforge Castle 5. Just simply track it down. <laughs> looks like I named it that way twice. And when I bring it in, that's what the castle looks like. I've got my five. I don't mind the 0.25 offset. When I hit slice, you just have to wait for a moment and almost instantly, you've got the nifty slices that you're gonna use in your Glowforge. If we spin to this side, you can see the markings that are gonna show how it gets assembled. Later, you can come back to this picture if you're confused, but this just worked out so slick, except for the silly one in the middle that I skipped, which was just my bad, because I was trying to teach while I was gluing it together. If I hit preview, it shows me how it's gonna lay it out. I've gotten to where this is not a problem for me that it's so large. Let me show you how I make this work in the Glowforge app. Simply export, I'm gonna call it uh, Glowforge Castle 5, and maybe I'm gonna do 5A because I probably already have one, and I'm gonna download it as an SVG. I like to put them in my keychains folder, that's where I'm just storing everything for a Glowforge. I should have named it Glowforge, but hey, once you got it going, you just keep using it. Alrighty friends, this is kind of cool. I am in the Glowforge app in a second account because as you'll see in a moment, I am already doing a cut on the other half of this machine. I just brought in that SVG and you'll notice almost instantly, it's huge. And I hope you also know, I'll zoom out a little bit, that if you set your settings to cut cardboard on large shapes, and you do small shapes at the same time, you risk starting a fire. I learned that the hard way. Uh, that is why you stay by mach your machine to watch them. Uh, those cuts were just so fast when it was cutting them out at my first settings that it did spark up and I had to just open the machine to stop the little fire. So with the little ones deleted, I am going to back out to home and I'm going to make a copy of this. Now the nice thing about that is I'll be able to set my plates in separate areas. So this is my plate one. I'm gonna print these six because they fit best. So all I do is I grab everything to the right and I delete it. When I grab these three pieces, I can pull them over and arrange them. This cardboard is gonna be a little bit small, but it's because I was really just using this scrap piece to cut out that hole and the cool project I'm making for my daughter right now. Select the parts, enter your settings. I'm using custom. I had a setting for at 3, 145, and 80. 
I'm gonna change that to 3 145 and 60 because I found that that cuts uh, appropriate and less chances of it burning out looks more crisp make sure I'm on my millimeters because remember I measured this to be five millimeters and that way it'll focus to the right height for my cardboard with this plate finished I can go back to home and I can hit the little rename button and I'm gonna rename this as plate one I'm going to go back to my original one and I'm going to duplicate it again or make a copy of it again and then I'm simply going to get rid of these pieces because I already did them and I can bring my other pieces over and I could arrange them all at once I could arrange them in little amounts I'm going to bring my setting back the one nice thing about having that setting entered already is uh, they show up red so it's easier to see them so then I simply just drop my pieces in place, make sure they're going to be in a location where they can print and not run into anything, and I'm good to go. With that plate built, I simply hit the rename button, and I'm going to name it Plate 2 Castle 5. That was all the parts I need, so I'm going to bring this in one more time where it's the full piece. This time I'm going to keep all the little holes and get rid of the big parts. There's my delete, there's my delete, and there's my delete. And now I can adjust these onto the screen. Oops, do not want to stretch them. That's where the undo tool is awesome. Grab those again. Make sure I've got a move, not a stretch. I'm gonna zoom out once so I can see these better and bring them in place. One other cool thing I did was I wanted the towers to be taller, so I just created an extra copy. It's super easy to just grab these and uh, choose Control C and Control V to double up what you're making. Control C, Control V, and boom, I've got extra holes. If you accidentally grab the wrong thing, you've always got your undo button. I'm gonna grab one more time and take those where I really wanted them so that they show up better I'm gonna set my settings uh, for these I found out it was important to do way faster like 400 for the speed and I'm gonna leave it at 50 for the power once again double checking my measurements uh, this item was five millimeters thick the more accurate you have all those settings the more likely everything turns out just the way you want. Once I've got my plates all set, then I can back out to home again, and when the laser's ready, I can print them. This one, of course, I can delete because it was the one where I was just making the copies for the rest. Alrighty, friends, so here we are with Cardboard Castle 2. Now that it's cut out, uh, this time I had my settings, so it was real easy to just line it up and then you can see I put those little pegs by raising them up five millimeters each time it is super easy to find my little pieces and put them on in order so there's four and then five and it just comes together in a snap there you can see my HL mod tech uh, showed up pretty cool the door is just as we would expect it to be and then the glowforge words are all right there just need to glue it together and there you have it tower complete now you may wonder why would I build with cardboard I'm not gonna make any money selling this well my glow forge hasn't been purchased to make money my globe forge was purchased to teach kids how to work with a laser and cardboard is free so anytime that I can have them uh, create with something that's a free resource boom uh, we can do awesome stuff this one I built with layers because I was mimicking that Glowforge Earth uh, where it was a lampshade. Um, my next project is to make walls that interlock. So I'm going to teach kids how to design dovetails so that our cardboard walls can just fit together. And we will build structures that uh, come together like that. One of the most amazing things is when you see this from the side and you get to see the light come through the Glowforge Castle.
So hey friends, I hope you enjoyed the whole process it took me to make this Glowforge castle and find it useful. Uh, if you did and if you enjoyed the movie, please hammer that like button. Have a question, comment, or suggestion, add it down below. Click the notification bell to be the first to know when I make a new movie. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Mash that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Happy forging.